Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is a brand new 2024 Mazda CX-90. And today, I'm gonna review it for you guys. You know, I picked the one beautiful, nice day we had out this week to finally review a car, and it's the day that all the landscaping companies are out mowing the lawns. So, <laughs> hopefully the lawn mowers don't come through too heavily on my microphone. Let's get started. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Lancaster Mazda for allowing me to borrow this car to review. For all your Mazda needs in the Lancaster area, I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. Starting out with the front end of the CX-90, this retains Mazda's corporate styling, but updates a few things and adds some really cool LED turn signals right here incorporated into the grille. You'll also have parking sensors on the front of the bumper and a camera for the 360 degree camera system. The CX-90 adds this 360 degree camera system on more than just the top trim models. So that's really nice to see. Uh, you'll also have full LED headlights right there with a LED daytime running light incorporated into it. Overall, this front end styling is very aggressive, pretty luxurious overall. And then if we move here to the profile, you're gonna have 275 45R tires around these 21 inch wheels. They are really cool. I like the two-tone silver and black design and they add to the very BMW-esque stance of this SUV. And that's not a bad thing. I think these styling cues from that are very cool, especially when we get to the back. I think you're gonna see that in this SUV as well. But Mazda has stepped up the premium uh, appearance of their car and the interior, as we'll get to in a minute, is also incredibly luxurious. You'll have an inline six badge right there. Let's take a quick moment to talk about what's underneath the hood. Moving underneath the hood in the CX-90, this is powered by Mazda's Skyactiv G 3.3 liter turbocharged inline six, which makes 340 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. Now, this particular engine comes with a mild hybrid boost, which has things like regenerative braking, but a full plug-in hybrid is also available. And then moving up here, you'll have a body color mirror cap with a turn signal indicator implemented into it. There is also a camera right here for the 360 degree camera system. Uh, there's blind spot monitoring. They are power and power folding mirrors here on the premium. Then you'll have a chrome strip that goes along the bottom that ends in a Mazda badge right there. There's keyless entry. And this particular one has Mazda roof racks. As you can see, there is a panoramic moonroof. A little bit more about that when we move to the interior. You have a massive gas cap right here. It's just so gigantic, um, and I think that's really funny. And then as we move to the rear here, as I mentioned, very BMW-esque. Do you see the BMW in that? I think I do. Um, I think especially the taillights, the swooping design. Uh, it's not a bad thing, but it is very BMW. Um, you'll have an e Skyactive G badge right there, Lancaster Mazda's uh, badge. Then you'll have a camera right here for the 360 degree camera system, your Mazda logo, and the CX-90 all-wheel drive badge. And then there is a button down here. Man, it's getting really windy. That's why we did this all handheld, because it's very windy today. Um, opening it up, it does open up automatically. And then you're going to have a pretty good amount of storage right here. This is a three-row SUV, so for uh, what you get, it's a lot of storage. Then right here, you'll have a 12-volt a little LED cargo light, and if you'd like, you can manually fold these seats down. A little disappointing that that is not, uh, it does fold farther, I just have the floor mats kind of pushed up there so I can show you guys this back part, the magic of filmmaking, a little behind the scenes. Um, but these seats do go flush, you can fold them and then the second row does go flush as well. Um, but little disappointing, they're not power operated, though, this SUV does start out a little less expensive than some other similar three-row SUV offerings, and it does have quite a lot of luxury features. So I think it's easy to let that slide that these are manual. And also, 
you don't have to worry about the electronics breaking in them at some point. So that's something that's pretty easily forgiven uh, on the rear cargo area of the CX-90. Before we move to the interior, the last thing I want to talk about is the key very quickly. Here's your Mazda logo right here. It has lock, unlock, panic, and if you hold this, it does raise and lower your lift gate. So that's very convenient. A lot of different methods to raise and lower the lift gate there. Let's take a quick look at the interior. I always say quick look. It's, it's going to be a little bit. Moving to the interior of the all-new CX-90, it lives up to its premium name. It is incredibly luxurious in here. The material and build quality is excellent, and I can't wait to show you guys. Starting here with the door panel, you'll have a softer touch material up here, and then down here it is very nice leatherette to rest your arm. You'll have your window controls, your power mirror controls, and the button to power fold your mirrors. Then you'll have lock and unlock, and I love on the door handle you get this nice leather trim right there, um, and that's a good grab point right there. Then you'll have some buttons for your safety features, and then this is the button to open your rear lift gate and close it, and then you'll have your power memory seat buttons, because of course these are power seats, uh, up, down, back, forward, and power lumbar as well. Then down here, this is actually a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, a uh, very nice premium feature right there. Then you'll have your steering wheel with a host of controls for this center gauge cluster screen. This is a fully digital screen right here. And as we turn the Mazda on, you're reminded of how many warning lights you could have. Thankfully, they all go away. Um, now you'll have your volume, your sources, Bluetooth right here. And then this info button controls some stuff down here in the lower portion of the gauge cluster, um, your safety features, uh, direction, and some other things that you can mess with right there. Then you'll have buttons to control your radar guided cruise control. What I really like is if you click this and engage it, it changes up the entirety of the screen and you can set your follow distance, other cool things like that and then it pops the screen back to how it was. Now, this isn't the most customizable screen in the industry right now, um, but it does have a few cool features like that. One of the other cool features is that uh, down here you'll have your uh, drive mode, and so you can switch between normal, sport, and off-road. Clearly see, you can clearly see that the off-road is a little bit different, and I really like sport. You're gonna get these red accents here on the gauge cluster screen and that's gonna change up uh, the layout just a little bit. So we'll put it back in normal, but I really like that you have that option. Pretty much everything is going to fully digital gauge cluster screens at the moment, uh, and I'm not complaining, it's pretty neat. Um, this is a leather wrap steering wheel, very comfortable. You do have paddle shifters back here and pretty traditional wiper and turn signal stocks. And then if we move over here, you do have a massive infotainment screen here in the center. Now Mazda's, um, shtick is that they do not allow you to use it as a touch screen what but you control it down here with this little dial and uh, that will basically change uh, the different menus and stuff and the thought process is you know you have your eyes on the road you want to go into your communication you can click that without actually having to take your eyes off the road to to mess with this screen and then uh, there are quick set buttons basically you can get to your um, navigation right here if you want, or you can go right to your music, go right to home, and go back. So it's fairly intuitive. It does take a little bit getting used to, uh, especially if you've used a vehicle with a touchscreen for a long time. Um, but it is a nice system overall, and I do really like the functionality there. You'll have a hazards button right here, and then while we're up at the top, uh, there is a small um, heads-up display, so that's cool. I'm going to zoom in here. Um, you can see it gives you uh, your speedometer. Pretty simple, but it's ni nice to still have that heads-up display right there. And then if we move down here, you'll have your climate controls. I really like the placement of the air vents and the leather that wraps around right here. Again, very premium feeling. This is a soft-touch material up here, and you'll have all the different climate controls. So what I like Again, I like a lot of things in here. 
Um, you'll have your fan speed and everything come up on the screen and you have these really premium feeling buttons uh, for raising and lowering the temperature on each side. I have it synced right now, it is dual zone, so you can set some of the climate over here and some of the climate over here if you want for the front passenger and driver to have different temperatures. Um, you'll have heated steering wheel and heated seats right here. Uh, there are two blank switches. I'm gonna guess those are for the cooled seats that this premium does not have, but pretty much every other switch is filled out here for your climate controls, the uh, fan speed, temperature, everything like that. Recirculation is all right there as well. Then down here, you'll have a 12 volt and some storage, and then this nice um, like metallic texture uh, to give it a more premium feel in here. It's not actual metal, um, but it does look very nice. It does feel very good. Um, and you'll have your shifter. So this shifter looks like a fairly traditional shifter, but there's a, a little bit of a learning curve here. Um, so I put my foot on the brake and then I pull in on here. That's pretty normal for a shifter. But then what I do is I actually push it over to the right. That's going to put me in reverse. That's going to bring up the 360 degree camera that this is equipped with. That's really nice to see that you have those different options there and you can mess with uh, what you want to see, which angle you want to see uh, with the dial. And then if I go down here again, I put it into drive and then I can upshift to put it in neutral. And then again, if I want to get it back to park, I have to push in and pull over to the left. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, but um, still actually I kind of I kind of like it. I think it's a neat little design. Um, all these companies are doing the different shifters. Um, down here you'll have hill descent control. You can turn that off and on, and then you'll have a button to access those cameras again in case you want to do maybe some light off-roading and you want to see what the front camera sees. Then here was the aforementioned uh, controls for the screen and your electronic parking brake buttons. And then um, your center armrest right here uh, is pretty unique. There's two buttons right here and you can open it split. Not a lot of vehicles do that. Um, Mazda happens to be one of the manufacturers that does, um, and it's cool. So you've got that split design. It does not open um, like individually as one thing, but that's still okay. And then you'll have two USB-Cs down here and a little storage area. And that pretty much wraps up uh, the driver's position in the seat you have here. I guess I'll talk about the comfort of the uh, leather very quickly. I will say you sink into it very nicely. It does have a pretty commanding view of the road in the passenger side, as you can see, very um, luxurious as well. If we move up here, just a traditional mirror. It's not uh, a um, mirror that turns into a screen or anything like that, but it is auto dimming. And then here you will have your nice LED map lights that come on in this, this soft glow. And then you'll have your sunglasses holder and a panoramic moonroof. So let's take a quick look at the back seats. Moving to the second row, you're going to get captain's chairs back here on this particular model with very nice armrests. They are just as comfortable as the front seats. And then this particular chair has a little fold up um, cup holder, which I think is neat. This reminds me of the early 90s when cars were just starting to adopt cup holders. Uh, they had these kind of chintzy uh, little stands for them. This is a little bit more premium feeling, but it does feel like a little bit of an aftermarket thought to add cup holders. I guess I should clarify, I'm 23. I don't actually remember when these were introduced because <laughs> I'll probably get a comment, um, but I've seen videos where people talk about it and I've been in cars that have these chintzy older cup holders, but you can just fold that back up and then bring that down for an easier pass through to the third row, which we'll talk about in a minute. But first you'll have a climate vents back here, two more USB C's, and then you're going to have a climate controls for the rear seats right here for that. I like that they give you a little screen, um, again, adds to the premium feeling. And then you have kind of elevated uh, second row seats here. Uh, feels like a kind of stadium seating and I really like that. Um, I can see uh, fairly well and it gives me great access to this panoramic moonroof. And the uh, material quality is not flubbed back here. Sometimes in these second rows of cars and especially third rows, but we'll talk about that in a minute, um, cars kind of go cheaper on the parts because people aren't sitting in the back row too often. I recently did a Honda Accord that was like all hard touch plastic uh, and it basically just was not as nice in the second row as the, the first row. Um, but here it is uh, a little bit different of a texture I believe here 
Um, this is not as hard, but it is still a fairly soft touch material. And then down here, this is very nice, very comfortable to rest your arm on. And you get that cool metallic-esque uh, material right here, though it is plastic, I'm pretty positive. Um, then you have this nice pull-up uh, sunshade. Love a good sunshade in a car. And you will have a little light up here for your second row passengers. Um, a lot of leg room. A lot of leg room right here. I got three or four inches, and I have this seat fairly far back because of my filming. And then I have probably about three inches of headroom. Um, though, I anticipate this to be probably purchased the most by families, a little bit larger families. And if they have kids, these are very spacious back seats. Even when we get to the third row, you'll see uh, very comfortable back there as well. Speaking of the third row, let's take a quick look. All right, sitting in the third row of the CX-90. Uh, the material quality back here is not as nice, of course, as I mentioned, a little hard touch plastics, uh, but the seats are very comfortable still. You do have uh, the nice leather trim around that and the uh, colors extend to back here as well, which is nice. I have um, not a lot of leg room. My, my shoes are kind of stuffed underneath the seat. This is about where I would have it sit. I think that if I was only one person back here and I had this, this whole row uh, to move my leg, it would be a little bit of an easier experience back here. Um, but if somebody else was in the back seats with me, uh, it could be a little uncomfortable. Not the worst third row though. There's still some amenities. You get a USB-C back here and you have a little climate vent. Um, so it's not super claustrophobic. This window's pretty big. Um, back here for kids. Long road trip, absolutely. Adults, not gonna lie, probably not. <laughs> Driving the CX-90, I have it out on the road here and hitting the gas a little bit. It's very smooth, surprisingly so. This is the turbo model, so a little bit more power uh, behind the engine, a little bit more horsepower, a little bit more torque. Very quiet in here. You get a little bit of wind noise up top, but nothing terrible. And as I mentioned before, the seating position is really nice, very comfortable. Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention on the heads-up display. I wasn't sure if it had it, but it does. It has um, a speedometer, or not a speedometer. The speedometer is there. It does have that. It also has a speed limit reader. So it read that the sign was 35 miles per hour. It's displaying that on the screen, um, that that is what the speed limit is. That's very useful if you haven't passed a sign in a while um, to remind you, oh, that's what it is. Um, but the turning is great here. The braking is super responsive on this. Very comfortable. The seating position is great. And the acceleration is pretty good. But, you know, most people, as I mentioned before, are going to be buying this as a family vehicle, not as something that they could take to the drag strip. So it's not necessarily something people are looking for, that crazy acceleration. But it does get up to speed a little bit faster um, than most three-row family SUVs that I review. And that's impressive. Everything feels very comfortable in here. And that's the best thing that I can say uh, during this driving impression. But as always, I would encourage you to go test drive one yourself to see if it's something uh, that you would like. Well, that is pretty much gonna wrap up my review of this CX-90. I really hope you guys enjoyed. But before I go, I'd like to mention that I am a Christian. And if you have any prayer requests, I would love to be able to pray for you guys. And lastly, I'd like to close with a weekly scriptural reading. This week's is from Matthew 6, verses 46 through 49. Now, Jesus is talking here. He's the one speaking. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man who has built a house and dug deep and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house, but could not shake it, for it was founded on rock. But he who hears and does not obey is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation, against which the streams beat vehemently. Immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Take care.